Good morning, um, and thank you for all coming out on what's quite a nice sunny day today. Um, as David said, I'm the nas I'm national contact point for the SME instrument. Um, I'm also the national contact point for the Secure Societies part of Horizon 2020. Um, I'm not quite sure I'm quite the expert yet. I only recently took over from uh, Jane Watkins, who many of you may know, um, who is here today, in fact, talking about um, her program in her new role, um, but and also here today to provide advice and help for you should you need it, is Stephen Alexander, who's the national contact point for legal and financial matters. I'm aware that there's going to be very mixed knowledge and understanding about the SME instrument, so for those of you that are very familiar with it, I apologise. For those that are new, I hope there's enough information here, um, and I hope we, there's something in here to, for everyone to pick up on. Right. The first thing to say is the SME instrument is one of a number of programmes in Horizon 2020 that SMEs are eligible to apply for. Uh, there are the, if you like, the big programmes under the societal challenges, which are very much consortia-based programmes. They involve uh, members from many, at least three, but possibly more, um, European member states. The Eurostars programme, which Jane will talk about. There's another programme which is also very much focused on getting things to market, but in a much um, smaller way, if you like, in that the consortia are smaller, the actual numbers and members are smaller, and the Fast Track to Innovation, which was piloted last year. But I'm not going to talk particularly about that today. What we're going to focus on is the SME instrument, which is there very much for demonstration and getting things to market. What is absolutely key here is that you can apply as a single SME. There is no need to involve European partners. You don't have to look for consortia members. It is just focused on you as a company. And it's very much been put into the Horizon 2020 programme to address the issue that the programme really didn't focus on industry. There was criticism in the past that the, that the framework programmes, the European programmes generally, were very much research focused. But this is the whole push of Horizon 2020, is to really look to exploit that research, to get things to market, to generate wealth, to create jobs, to improve society in Europe as a whole. And by doing that, one of the key things the Commission wanted to do was support SMEs. So this is very much looking at helping you to develop your idea in a European context to get it to market so you can start doing those things of making money, building companies, building investment, getting more members of staff and really increasing wealth in society. Before we really go any further, and it sounds a bit bonkers, but it is absolutely key, is you have to work out whether you are, in fact, an SME. Now, that might sound very obvious to you, but it can be defined in many different ways. As far as the Commission and this programme is concerned, you need to have fewer than 250 employees, or an annual turnover of no more than 50 million, and or a balance sheet of no more than 43 million euros. Whether you count as an SME may depend on how you count your workforce, how you do your turnover, how you do your balance sheet. And really, I can't sort of iterate enough how important it is to make that decision right at the beginning. This being a European program, there is more information than you could ever want out there. So have a look at this, the internet, have a look at the link that's provided here, and it will help you to define whether or not you are. But what you can also do, and is absolutely critical here, is a self-assessment wizard. This will take you through the process, and it will actually not only sort of help you to define whether you're an SME, it will actually validate you. It will put you in a position that you can go forward and put in a proposal and actually submit to try and get some European money. And this is an absolutely critical step. Very often people contact us almost at the last minute saying they're having problems with their submission. And it goes right back to the beginning. They haven't started at first principles. So really start at the beginning, look at the definition, look to see if you're an SME, do the wizard, do the registration, and then if you decide to submit, your life will be much easier later on. So what are the key features of the SME instrument? The key thing it's targeted at 
innovative SMEs. They're not looking for run-of-the-mill SMEs. They're looking for SMEs that are really keen to do something different, have some innovative ideas, are going to do something that is game-changing. But above all, you must have ambition. This isn't just money to take you forward to the next step of your development. This is to help you really make a huge leap forward. So you need to have ambition, and you need, above all, to have ambition in the European context. So many times people come to us, and yes, they're a good company. They may be innovative, and they're ambitious, but they're ambitious within the boundaries of the UK. This needs to be European-focused. You need to be a for-profit SME. That's part of the rules and regulations. You, as well as being ambitious and innovative, you need to be competitive. You have to be prepared to go in and have a bit of a tussle. You know, this is a competition. Only the best will win. Because we're helping to try and, the aim is to try and get you to market, you need to be market orientated. And you need to be close to that market when you begin to submit. So for those of you that are familiar with them, you need to be at technology readiness level six. Basically, that means you need to have demonstrated that your proposal is that you, what your idea is will work. This is the aim of this is to get you from TRL six up to the point within two to three years you will actually be selling your product, your services, and actually launching. It is embedded in the societal challenges and the key enabling technologies of Horizon 2020. You are very lucky here. It's a very, very wide program. And to be honest, I doubt any of you are in any business that couldn't come under some dimension of that program. It does aim to help you do things rapidly. And I might use the term rapidly slightly in inverted commas. This is a European program. But it really is not a long process. And they do come to quite quick decisions. So whereas in 2008, for this sort of work, we're looking at 400 days to get you to con from grant to contract. Now we're looking at 92 days for phase one and 170 days for phase two. This is absolutely critical. If you're innovative, if you're market leading, we need to get you the money as soon as we can. And once again, you can do this on your own. There are three phases of the SME instrument. Um, Phase one is very much the concept and feasibility assessment. This is your proof of concept. This is a six months. This is a short, sharp study. It's relatively simple to put together the proposal. It's relatively short, just 10 pages. And it provides funding and coaching to really take you forward, to really get to your business to the point that you can begin to really submit for the big money. Basically, at the end of this, you will produce an elaborated business plan. And I'm going to keep emphasizing this word business. This is not research funding. This is funding to get you to market. So it's to help you to explore the IP regime. It's to help you do pilot applications. It's to help you to do your risk assessment. The whole point of it is to de-risk your work to take it forward. The next phase is phase two. And as we've heard, this is where some of the serious money is. 0.5 million to 2.5 million. Now, again, it's worth saying here that the Commission funds at the 70% funding rate. Once again, there is coaching available. The whole idea all the way through is to help you have the skills you can to take this to market as rapidly as possible. This is a longer piece of work. We're talking of 12 to 24 months. And this is really to get you to the edge of market. So we're looking at prototyping, testing, piloting, miniaturizing, application development, whatever suits your proposal. And I'm going to emphasize again here, it's very much in the European context. So they'll be looking for evidence that you're looking at European markets and potentially worldwide markets. Then we have phase three. Now, this doesn't have any money associated with it as such, but what it does have is advice and it has guidance. So it helps you with coaching. It helps you to it, look at investment training. It helps you to find ways of actually exploiting your research. Who will your customers be? The outcome being market success. Now, you can do phase three at any stage. You can apply for that at any point, and that's something worth talking to the EEN about. You can go straight into phase two. 
Some companies do, and some companies have been very successful. But our recommendation generally is to look at phase one first. There's a number of reasons for this. First of all, it's a simpler application process. It's a shorter piece of work. It's easier for you, particularly if you've not applied for European funding in the past. It gives you the opportunity to do so at minimum, the minimal cost possible to your company with regard to time and finances. The phase two proposal being for more money, it's more complex, it's longer. We're talking about 30 pages, if you like, plus annexes. And it's difficult to talk of a proposal in, in page length, but you can get an idea that it probably will take about three times as much work to write it. If you go straight into phase two, the evidence has suggested that companies that are go for phase one first are more successful than phase two. So it's not black and white. If you've actually done all the work necessary for phase one, then it may well be worth your time. But that's something to think about and probably something to explore with the EEN. What is the right stage to go in at? But what is absolutely key is you are at TRL 6 all the way through. The one exception there is some of the medical programs, but generally, just keep that focus. You need to be at that stage of development. And what call do you apply for? Now, that can be a little more challenging than you necessarily think it is. If you work in space technologies, it might seem very logical that you go for SME Instrument 04, Engaging SMEs in Space Research and Development. And if you go to the relevant web page and click on that, it will explain what that program is looking for. Some of the other areas are fairly, fairly obvious, you may think. But I will urge you to look at this slightly differently and actually to develop that innovation that you've already got in your business and look to see how you're applying it. These are large and complex programs, and they cover a multitude of things. For example, my own area of security, we look at the bottom. It says engaging SMEs in security research and development. And it's quite simple for the SME instrument. It just says an application with any aspect of the main program. And you may think, well, I don't do security. But when you look at the Secure Societies program, it covers everything from disaster resilience and recovery all the way through to fighting crime and terrorism, border control, cyber security, and also um, infrastructure protection. Now, it may well be that something that you do is relevant there. We've had, for example, programs looking at how do we recover from pandemics, so the health community can look at that. So I really advise you to pour yourself a large gin and tonic, a beer, a strong coffee or something, and sit down and just start looking at these programs a bit differently. Start looking at the key topics. Because one of the key ways of getting innovation is to bring new thinking into something, to bring something from another area into a program. I have a colleague here who I haven't seen for many years from MOD, and we were working in the Centre for Defence Enterprise at the time, and one of our most successful programs involved some weavers. Now, you may think, what are, what are weavers doing working with MOT? But what they were looking to doing was looking at developing fabrics that develop power and could carry. The uniform could be the, actually the battery, take the weight off the soldier. Innovation, thinking differently, it made a big difference. So try and apply that to your program. We are very lucky today that we have assessors here, and I would not urge you to really take their expertise and milk it as much as you can, because at the end of the day, they're the people you need to impress. But I will talk a little bit about your proposal from my perspective as an NCP and the proposals we see. When you actually put your proposal together, basically the same areas are there and relevant for both phase one and phase two. It needs to be, have excellence all the way through. We're looking for the best of the best, the creme de la creme. So that really needs to go through. What is it that makes this excellent? And then it needs to have impact. We're not looking for things that make small changes, just an alternative to what's already out there. We're looking for things that really do change Europe. So is it going to make a difference? Is it excellent? Has it got impact? Then above all, can you actually do it? Have you actually got the company structure to actually implement it if we give you the money? Can you actually deliver the work you've said you're going to do? 
as we've said, it's not a consortia, but it may well be you need to subcontract some of the work. Do you know who you'll be working with? Are those people out there? Have you already got relationships with them? If it's only a six-month study, you need to know who they are at the begin with. You've got a bit longer if it's the phase two. But, you know, if you're going to spend most of your time trying to find somebody you can work with, that doesn't help with the delivery. And then being a European programme, there will be eth issues to do with ethics and security. Now, I put that on. It's something to consider. It's probably not a major factor, but it is in there. And that's exactly the same for phase one or phase two. So really the key thing I want you to take home from this is excellence and impact, and particularly impact, because that's heavily weighted in the assessment. When we see proposals, and people sort of send them to us very shortly before they submit, the most common mistakes we see is the TRL level is not convincing. We need to believe, and you need to convince the person who's reading it, you are where you say you are. You need to provide evidence that you are at the TRL level you're claiming. Companies are very good at having the ability to deliver and to commercialise and take it forward. But because it's so ingrained in your business practice, you probably aren't quite so used to telling people how you're going to do it. So you really need to be able to do that. You need to be able to convince the assessors that you can take the work forward, you can commercialise it. And you've thought beyond that, that six months, that two years, to actually getting it to market. That excellence isn't to imp it is not linked to impact and implementation. You know, you've got it in one area, it tends to be kept sort of separate box as far as people are concerned. It needs to be all the way through. Is it easy to read? And I'll come back to this a bit, but one of the challenges is, is your assessors may be deep experts and very familiar with your actual business area. They may not be. They may be more generalist. They may be from the business community or the, fi or the investment community. So you need to make it so it's accessible, so it tells a story, that the language is clear. Remember, your assessors may not be first, speaking first language speaking English. Now, their English is probably better than yours, but still, you know, don't use jargon, don't use phrases, make it straightforward. Be careful of using acronyms. I mean, people love acronyms, and I'm going to single out the ICT community for this particular. You really love them. But at the end of the day, acronyms don't mean the same thing in different countries. And although you might have explained what your acronym means, you know, if you have to keep referring back to oh, what does that stand for, what does it stand for, it makes it quite challenging to read. It needs to be, as I said, readable by someone who's not a deep expert. So you've, it's already been suggested to you to get other people to read it. So do that. And is it value for money? I said I've got one minute late, but I'm going to take two because it's just because we're going to get through this. But it's a rolling submission date. Make sure you submit in time. 80% of proposals are submitted 48 hours before the cutoff. We all do it. I enter dog shows two minutes before the entries close. It's a mistake. It puts you under stress. It makes things very late. The portals slow down. When those dates are there, look at it a week earlier. And it's going back to reading again and presentation. And I'm going to use this simply because you're going to remember the mad woman who put up some pictures of dogs. And I'm using that dog show analogy again. Presentation matters. That is exactly the same dog 24 hours apart. As a deep expert, I can tell you that wet, soggy dog is a very good Tibetan Spaniel. You, not being experts on Tibetan Spaniels, probably got a better idea he's a really good Tibetan Spaniel by that picture there of him groomed and presented and absolutely showing himself off. That's what your proposal needs to do. It needs to be more than competent, more than beautifully constructed, more than a good idea. It needs to be shining. It needs to be clear. You need to have pictures and diagrams to make an impact, to make it easy for people to see. Because at the end of the day, and I'm going to use that dog show comparison again, you need to be the best of the best. When it comes to best in show at Crufts, we're comparing an old English sheepdog with a cocker spaniel, with a poodle, with a Yorkshire terrier. And people say, how do you know which is the best? Well, the different thing is, these are all very, very good dogs. 
Which one wins is going to come up to the judge's opinion. Now that judge in your case is the assessor. They are all slightly different. Different things will grab them. Part of the assessment protocol is that they are asked for their overall impression, their gut feeling. This is the bit you want to get. You want to be the shining one that really shows them that not only are you good, are you excellent, you're the best of the best. And when you do your presentation, that's what you need to keep in mind. So we've got statistics and things which I've run out of time to tell you about. We can talk about those later if you want. But the bottom line is a good company with a good idea can achieve SME instrument funding. So thank you very much.